Hello, I'm Sarah Bancroft. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of VitaminDaily.com and I'm here today with Dr. Beth Taylor. and She's one of the doctors at the beautiful new clinic, All of Fertility. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about um, all things fertility. Um, it seems like it's just everywhere you look, you know, on TV, on the front of magazines, your friends are talking about it. Um, and there's just so much information out there, but a lot of it isn't correct. So um, at the first myth that I wanted to bring up with you is about age. Um, it feels like you know women look younger, um, they're in shape, they're running marathons, they're eating organic, um, but really um, nothing changes with your fertility. Um, That's right. Uh, we say, you know, 30 is not the new 20, and 40 is not the new 30, and, and 50 is not the new 40. And we say that because although you feel young, your ovaries and the eggs in them are not young. They're as old as you are, and we know fertility declines with age. So no juice cleanse in the world is going to make right. us more fertile? <laughs> Good try, but it won't. <laughs> Tell me some of the precise ages where we have to start thinking about um, you know, I think people maybe start thinking about fertility almost too late. So what are some of the ages that they should be thinking about? I think if you're actively trying to get pregnant right now, and it's been more than six months or a year, you should seek help. Um, speak to your, fa your family physician or a fertility specialist. If you're single and thinking, oh, I'd like to have children one day, um, and you're over 35, you should, you should talk to someone right away and either talking about egg freezing or about conceiving with donor sperm if, if you're a single female. Um, because the clock really ticks and after, as I say, after 35, the fertility starts to decline rapidly and after 40 it gets very difficult to get pregnant. So is, how expensive is it? Well for most people, um, um, it actually may cost nothing. And we're so lucky to live in BC because in BC, um, seeing a fertility specialist, having all the testing, and many of the treatments are actually MSP covered, covered by our provincial health plan. It's only when you get into IVF and more advanced treatments like IVF, which is also test tube babies, that you start to spend money. That's interesting. I think a lot of people wouldn't have realized that. So there's lots of happy couples that have, um, mm -hmm. you know, a, a fix that, that doesn't require um, spending Large thousands sums of money. That's right. So people need to not be hard on themselves and just talk to someone and get sorted out. So our, that lead, brings us to our fifth myth, and that's sort of about who is the typical client mm. for a clinic like this. Again, you automatically think, oh, it's going to be a woman, but you see um, all kinds of scenarios mm -hmm. in your clinic. So the most common scenario is, a, is a, a couple, but we also see single women, we'll see single men, we'll see same-sex couples, uh, male and female. Um, so really, anyone who's hoping to grow a family um, would, would come to a clinic like this. Well, it's been really interesting speaking with you today. Thank you for telling us about these myths of fertility. I think um, we've all learned a lot. Great. And um, I think you're doing wonderful work here at the clinic. And it's been really nice speaking with you. Thank you. Thanks for your time.